Hi and welcome. This video is going to demonstrate creating a line drawing in the Visio interface within uh, SI2015. So to do that, go to the start menu, go to projects and uh, manage projects. So select the project you want to work with. Um, create a Visio file if there isn't one. Uh, this one happens to have a Visio file so what I'm going to do is just double click this to open it and I'm going to be prompted to check out the file. So of course choose yes need to check out a file in order to be uh, able to edit it and to work on it. And this will open the Visio interface for this project. And so it's actually opening in Visio, but you'll see over here um, we've added a product list, uh, a shape list here, and then uh, you can call up your project editor from here. Uh, right now there's nothing in this project, um, nothing in the bill of materials. So I'll show you multiple ways that you can add over here to create a line diagram. And that's one of the pages that you can create here in the Visio interface. So we'll go ahead and uh, drag a product over here to the line diagram page and uh, I'll show you what happens. Uh, first off, we'll pick a location and a uh, system for the product so you stay organized as you're adding. Uh, we'll go ahead and click the product explorer here and uh, do a quick search for the product we're looking for. Go ahead and drag this over to the drawing page. And this is what you're going to get, a, a JPEG representation of the product. And uh, this is resizable, as you can see here. And it has a little text box that displays showing the manufacturer, the model, and the component ID for the product. Now a little bit more about um, this JPEG image here. We'll go ahead and double click this product to edit it. So um, if you have a large image loaded for a product, you see this large image tab here, uh, that's what will drop on this page. So um, in this case, there isn't one. So it defaulted back to this little tiny thumbnail one, which you can see is not the best quality here. Um, it's going to get a little blurry depending on how much you resize this. So that's the whole reason we have this large image shape. So if you want to uh, add a large image here, go ahead and do that. You can. Uh, try to find it in uh, the details library. You could f try to find it here in uh, Google Images. Let's go see if we can do that. Uh, you know, let's check and see if it's in the uh, details library. So just by clicking this, uh, let me pull this over to this screen here. It opens up this window, so it found an image. Um, if it's not the one you want, of course, you can then go do a Google search. Uh, let's give this one a try. I'm going to just uh, copy the image and close out of here. I'm going to paste that in here. And now if you want this to replace that um, JPEG image, you can leave this checked here. Um, otherwise, uncheck that. Uh, we'll go ahead and save and close this. And um, now that's not going to automatically update the shape. Once a shape's on a page, it's going to retain its um, shapeness. Go ahead and delete it from the page. But before I do that, let me show you that the product was added here to the bill of materials. You can see it here in the list, and it was assigned to be in the lobby. Um, notice the Visio icon here. Uh, this column indicates that this particular um, item from the project is on this drawing page. Um, so if you just delete uh, using the delete key on your keyboard, take a look here, all that did was remove the Visio icon. It doesn't remove it from the project. Um, so now we can go ahead and drag this back over and drop it and you'll get the new uh, hopefully improved shape. Now if a product doesn't have a JPEG, uh, it'll just drop a box on this page. So I'll pull over a, a product here that uh, you know doesn't have a JPEG associated with it. Um, uh, before you do that, uh, always make sure here in the project editor that, that you choose a location and a uh, system so you stay organized. So in this case, let's just switch it up. We'll go here and choose, still choose AV system and drag over whatever this thing is. And it drops in, as you can see, uh, no JPEG image for this item. We double click it. Real simple here, no image. If you want to add that, go ahead. And once again, if you add the image here and save this, you'll have to then just delete this box and redrag it over from the project editor, and uh, you'll get the JPEG image. So um, the point of this page is to just give a you know nice representation of what you're going to create for the client. And of course, you can um, create these for any number of systems that you do. Um, you can create as many of these pages as you'd like. Uh, they work well as a sales tool. Um, to give visual representation. Um, so you can also um, you know, draw lines between them. We called it a line diagram. So if you want to draw connectors between uh, products, you can. I'll go ahead and demonstrate that next. I'll do a quick search over here for a product. 
pull something over that we can make a connection with. Expand this and I'm going to pull in uh, the speaker here. That's now been added to the project. So again, if you want to change your JPEG, you can. Um, I'll just leave that there and show you now uh, how to draw lines between these. So um, you can always just use the Visio connector tool if you'd like. You click on this and when you get close to one of these shapes, you'll see the connection points appear around them. Let's zoom in a little bit so you can see that. Um, so you can just left mouse click, drag and attach that there. Uh, then of course you can format the line if you want over here. You can color in the line, change the weight, dashes, arrows, or just go to line options so you can see all of your options here. Or quite a few of them. We'll go here and you know just maybe make it red. Um, anyways, that's all I'll do. Um, so if you just go ahead and uh, close out of that, it's changed it. Um, of course, if you double click on the Visio shape, you'll get a little text box. If you want to see what this is, it's 14.2. Uh, when you're done, go back to your pointer tool and you've made a connection. Now, um, that's all this is, is just a drawing with a, a line drawn between two things. Meaning this isn't going to report back to the reporting engine uh, in our software because it's not a real wire, it's just a, a line. So, um, you can add real wire to this if you want. Um, if it's in the project already or if you uh, plan to add it, you can drag a wire in uh, to the page. I'll show you what you get on the page here. Let's see if we can find just a quick search here. And I'll pull over this. And uh, this is being added to the project, of course, so you're going to get prompted for the uh, length and the head end because this is a bulk wire. So I'll go ahead and say this is going to be the audio head end. Uh, we'll leave it at 100 feet. Hit assign. And it drops a uh, little line connector shape. And this is actually one of the shapes that we've created, uh, but it is actually the wire. Um, so again, the wire was added here. You can see it in the materials list. If you double click it, of course, it will open that wire for edit and close this. And you can make a connection here if you'd like. Now, um, drag this end, make an attachment there, drag this one up to one of these space uh, or, or connection points is what I meant to say. And you've made a connection now that uh, is reportable. You can actually see this on um, a report. So in fact, let's go ahead and uh, run that. Just a real simple one. You won't get a whole lot of information out of here because there's no input or output information on these particular shapes. Uh, th those are done in our schematic drawings, but we'll just pull up a installation report, wire connections report, and you can either run this by wire number or um, uh, manufacturer than wire number. In this case, let's just have a quick look. Uh, so again, we don't know the connections on this report yet, but uh, it is showing that it's coming from this device to this device. So it's very cool uh, report there. Um, now, the shape that dropped here is actually one of the shapes we built. I mentioned that. So if you go over here to the shapes, um, the one I'm specifically referring to is this line connector shape. Um, uh, that's what we chose to drop over here to just do something um, simple. And what why it says audio on it, that's because that's the subcategory of this particular uh, wire. And that's what it's doing. Um, now, if you don't want to add... Um, real wires to the job at this point in time when you're just doing a sketch like this, uh, meaning you're not trying to get them here in the bill of materials, you can pull this line connector directly over here. It's one of the um, few shapes that we've created that isn't linked to products in our database, but we will prompt you for something. If you pull this over directly to the page and drop it, we're going to prompt you for the uh, type, which really means subcategory. Uh, for wires in our software. So if this is, say, an HDMI cable, you can mark it as that, hit OK, and it will you know, print HDMI on the wire shape, or sorry, the line connector shape. If you want to change the properties of the um, shapes that are dropping on the page, you can always right click to do it on the fly here, um, like turning off text blocks, um, unmerging text blocks. You can see it's checked right now, but if you uncheck this, what that'll do is it'll put the component ID on its own little uh, call out handle here. And that is the little text call out right there, the, that line. Um, snap text block position means it, it kind of tries to snap when you move these around the shape. Um, if you want to be flexible and be able to put it wherever you want, go ahead and turn that off and you'll be able to position the um, text wherever you would like. Um, you can also change the spacing around the um, shape here. Um, it's set to medium point spacing, but depending on the size of the shape, you could uh, say small point spacing and you may get more connection points that may line up more in the center if you'd 
like to see the connection point um, there instead of where I've connected it here. Um, but as with all of um, the D-Tools SI 2015 um, shapes, um, always have your uh, shape data window showing. It's not a default in Visio, but uh, once you turn it on once and save a uh, project, it'll remember that you've opened the window. So what I'm uh, referring to, if you go up to view here, go to task panes and choose shape data, uh, it will dock over here on the side and this will allow you to change those properties for multiple shapes at a time. And oftentimes you'll get more um, actual um, properties here available in the shape data window than you get via the right click. Um, in this case, they look similar uh, when you're right clicking here. Um, but in this, uh, for instance, notice show location uh, is turned off here. Uh, if you'd like to turn that on for some or all of the parts, in this case, I've just got one part selected turn on true and you'll see a little text box here will show the location that this has been assigned and now I'll show you a few finished examples this one is showing uh, three different systems on the same page uh, CCTV access control and intrusion using uh, those JPEG images and here is another one showing a uh, simple uh, home theater